scientists around the world had high hopes from the massive and most innovative space telescope that cost them an arm and a leg to build. People were extremely excited to see what this state-of-the-art telescope sends our way, and it sure did not disappoint. When the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope became public, the entire world looked at them in awe and disbelief. These images provided us with an extraordinarily high resolution and distant view of the universe, from merging galaxies millions of light years away to planets outside of our own Milky Way. Every single detail in these images fascinated the masses worldwide. However, even the scientists were baffled by the new and puzzling information the first batch of data from the James Webb Space Telescope revealed. Some of it even caused an uproar among the critics of the Big Bang Theory who believed that this data and these images refuted the concept of the Big Bang and the ever-expanding universe. In less than a year, this miraculous telescope has provided us with an immense amount of information about our universe that has entirely changed the way we look at it. And it's only logical that a telescope capable of visualizing galaxies billions of years away from us and the light from when the universe came into existence wouldn't face any problem in providing us with incredibly detailed images of our own solar system. And James Webb has once again proven its superiority by sending out some mind-boggling images of the largest planet in our solar system. Yes, you heard it right, NASA released unbelievably sharp new pictures of Jupiter, and honestly, we weren't ready for this amount of clarity. The images are composites of several different wavelengths of light and allow us to see the true colors of Jupiter and much more. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun and the largest one in our solar system. The planet is a massive gas giant, having a mass more than two and a half times that of all the other planets in the solar system combined. Jupiter is the third brightest natural object visible in the Earth's night sky after the Moon and Venus. The planet has been observed since prehistoric times and was named after the Roman god Jupiter, the king of the gods. It is primarily composed of hydrogen, however helium also is quite abundant and constitutes one quarter of its mass and one tenth of its volume. Experts believe that Jupiter probably has a rocky core made of heavier elements, but like most other gas planets, it doesn't have a well-defined solid surface. The ongoing contraction of Jupiter generates more heat than it receives from the Sun. Its rapid rotation is the reason why the planet's shape is an oblate spheroid, which means that it has a slight but noticeable bulge around the equator. Its outer atmosphere is divided into a series of latitudinal bands. There is turbulence and storms along their interacting boundaries. A prominent result of this turbulence and storms is the Great Red Spot, a huge storm in Jupiter's atmosphere that has been observed since at least 1831. The enormous planet is also surrounded by a faint planetary ring system and a powerful magnetosphere. The magnetic tail of Jupiter is almost 800 million kilometers long, and it covers nearly the entire distance to Saturn's orbit. So far, astronomers have identified 80 moons, but Jupiter possibly has many more. The four large moons of Jupiter were discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610 and are named Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Io and Europa are nearly the size of Earth's moon. Callisto is almost the size of Mercury, while Ganymede is larger. The first ever spacecraft to visit Jupiter was the Pioneer 10, which made its closest approach to the planet in December 1973. Since then, multiple robotic spacecrafts have explored Jupiter, including Pioneer, Voyager flyby missions, and New Horizons. The latest probe that paid a visit to the planet was at Juno, and it entered orbit around it in July 2016. In the near future, scientists are hoping to explore Jupiter's system further, especially the supposedly ice-covered liquid ocean of Europa. The International Astronomical Union formally named the planet Jupiter in 1976. The IUA has since named the newly discovered satellites of Jupiter for the mythological lovers, favorites, and descendants of the god Jupiter. Observations of the massive planet date back to at least the Babylonian astronomers of the 7th and 8th century BC. The ancient Chinese called it the Sui Star. The Italian polymath Galileo's discovery of Jupiter's four large moons using a telescope is thought to be the first telescopic observation of moons other than that of Earth. And during the 1660s, Giovanni Cassini discovered spots and colorful bands in Jupiter's atmosphere using a newer telescope. He also observed that the planet appeared oblate and estimated its rotation period. But it wasn't until 1692 that Cassini noticed that the atmosphere of Jupiter undergoes differential rotation. 
At its equator, the gas giant has a diameter of 142,984 kilometers. The average density of Jupiter is about the same as simple syrup and is lower than those of the four terrestrial planets. Its upper atmosphere is almost 90% hydrogen and 10% helium, but because helium atoms are larger than hydrogen, Jupiter's atmosphere is around 24% helium by mass. It also contains trace amount of methane, water vapors, ammonia, and silicon-based compounds. Previously, the Gemini North and Hubble Telescope have provided us with exceptional quality images of Jupiter, but the recent James Webb Space Telescope images of the planet are incredibly sharp, detailed, and downright mesmerizing. Jupiter glows with polar lights and shimmering clouds in the new JWST imagery. The northern and southern lights glow with a pale fire the north and south poles of the planet. M.K. de Pater, a planetary astronomer, has stated that they hadn't really expected the imagery to be this good. The images were captured by the near-infrared camera or near-cam on the telescope and were then converted to color visible to the human eye. The images revealed that the Great Red Spot, a centuries-old storm of Jupiter, is so big it could easily engulf Earth. It appears white in the pictures due to the reflected sunlight, just like other high-altitude clouds. The brightness in the images indicates altitude, so that means the Great Red Spot has high-altitude hazes, and so does the equatorial region of the planet. These observations of Jupiter were led by De Pater and Thierry Goucher. The pictures show orange and yellow hues at the poles. Towards the center, we see a mixture of blues and purples. The faint rings of far-off galaxies can also be seen photobombing in the background. According to Heidi Hamel, the Vice President for Science at the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy, the several bright white spots and streaks are most likely very high-altitude cloud tops of condensed convective storms. Since the images of Jupiter from JWST were artificially colored to make specific features stand out, the red coloring highlights the stunning auroras of the planet while the light reflected from clouds appears blue. The Hubble telescope was also capable of visualizing the auroras when capturing the ultraviolet light, but the infrared images from Webb shows them in greater detail, lighting up both poles of the planet. Auroras are colorful displays of light, and according to NASA, Jupiter has the brightest ones in our solar system. These occur when charged particles like protons or electrons interact with the magnetic field, also called the magnetosphere, that surrounds the planet. Because Jupiter's magnetosphere is 20,000 times stronger than Earth's, its auroras are also equally bright and vibrant. Webb has also captured images of icy Europa, and it also captured the giant rings of the planet the Hubble is unable to see. These thin rings are made of dust particles that form when cosmic debris smashes into four of Jupiter's moons. Luke Moore, an astronomer at Boston University, has said that the image of Jupiter is of course stunning, particularly the level of spatial detail is impressive in the infrared. Because of JWST's large primary mirror, the contrast is incredible, allowing us to see the faint rings as clearly as the immensely bright planet. The striking close-up taken through three different filters shows numerous cloud bands on Jupiter, along with the storms and auroral emissions. The smaller storms appear whitish or reddish-white, while the cyan hues reveal clouds buried deeper in the Jovian atmosphere, showing light reflected from the main cloud level of the planet at a pressure of around one bar. The close-up image also shows the transition between banded structures seen at equatorial and mid-latitude regions and the more complex vortices at higher altitudes. The reddish emissions of the massive auroral ovals can be attributed to ionized hydrogen atoms extending up to 1,000 kilometers above the cloud tops. Recently, a fascinating comparison of the earliest photograph ever taken of Jupiter and the most recent James Webb Space Telescope image has been shared by astronomer Jasmine Singh. The earliest photo was taken in 1879 by Agnes Mary Clerk, an Irish astronomer who then published it in her book titled A Popular History of Astronomy During the 19th Century. This side-by-side -side comparison showcases just how far astrophotography has improved in the last one and a half centuries. The photo from the 19th century is black and white and grainy. However, it is still obvious that the planet in the image is Jupiter because of the distinctive banding caused by differences in chemical composition and temperature of the atmospheric gas. The great red spot is also quite visible in Clark's photo, but because the image is upside down, it appears as if it's in the northern hemisphere instead of the southern. The spot is also markedly bigger in the older image. 
The greater size has been backed up by various studies. At one time, this storm was so big that three Earths could have fit inside it, but now it is estimated that only one Earth could fit inside it. Against the James Webb photo, Clerk's image seems like a toddler's drawing, but the field of astronomy has come a long way in the past century, and the JWST is quite an astonishing invention that Clerk didn't possess at the time. However, these aren't the only images of Jupiter. The infrared view imaged by Gemini North Telescope in Hawaii on January 11, 2017 is also quite astonishing. To a common person, it looks like a ball with bands of fire. The Hubble Telescope has also photographed Jupiter and its icy moon Europa in 2017 and 2020, respectively. Besides the faraway galaxies, something else was also noticed, photobombing the spectacular wide-field image of the giant planet. These two objects were identified as Amalthea and Adrastia. They're actually two of Jupiter's moons. They weren't too clear in the images, so for a layman, it wouldn't be easy to tell that they are moons and not stars or specks of dust on the picture. These two moons are just another reminder that despite being relatively closer to Earth, Jupiter, its rings, and its vast array of satellites is quite different. Amalthea and Adrastia were both discovered a long time ago. Amalthea was found by Edward Emerson Barnard in 1892, and Adrastia was discovered by the Voyager team in 1979. Both these bodies are actually moons of moons, which means they orbit Io, the large and dense Galilean moon of Jupiter, and is a pretty notable satellite. It is the most geologically active object in our solar system and has less water than any other. Amalthea is 250 kilometers in diameter, while Adrastia is about 20 kilometers. Adrastia appears as a dim dot at the edge of the rings in the image, while Amalthea lies almost twice as far from Jupiter's limb. A rich background of scattered light can also be seen permeating the image. Experts believe that Jupiter's aurorae and the bright moon Io are the sources of this light. Images are just one aspect of the James Webb Space Telescope's observational power and prowess. The spectroscopic abilities of the telescope will soon reveal even more awe-inspiring facts about Jupiter. Astronomers took spectra of the Great Red Spot on July 27th at near-infrared wavelengths. They also carried out similar observations in the mid-infrared range. They are planning to conduct closer spectroscopic studies in Jupiter's aurorae later this year. Any guesses what they might find? Tell us in the comments below.